fewer than 900 mountain gorillas are left in the world and their fight for survival is getting even harder. Climate change is forcing the apes to travel farther for food. In our continuing series, The Climate Diaries, Mark Phillips went to the mountains of Rwanda to see what else is putting these endangered animals in harm's way. It's a long way from Washington to the Volcanoes National Park in Rwanda, but what happens there is becoming a matter of life and death here. The mountain gorillas, the famous gorillas in the mist, all 880 of them, live on these slopes. They may know nothing of faraway debates about climate change, but they do have a sense that something is happening and it's not good. It used to be that the bamboo shoots that make up the major part of their diet popped up like clockwork when the rains came. But the rains were late this year and so is the bamboo. These gorillas will run on just about anything vegetarian, but the production of other foodstuffs, leaves and berries, has been altered too. The apes are having to roam up and down from about five to more than 14,000 feet to adapt. They're good at it, but climate change is affecting their environment in ways they may not be able to handle. These guys are the 800-pound gorillas in the room, except, of course, they really weigh in at about 400 pounds. And they're not in control of events. They're the potential victims of them. The gorillas' problems are made worse by the troubles of their close neighbors, people. Because the changing rain patterns have also made the water supply down in the valleys less reliable, local villagers have been going up into gorilla country where they're not supposed to go to bring that good mountain water home. Animal rights groups have been trying to get people to build catchment tanks to collect rainwater for a non-rainy day. But when the water runs out, you've got to get it somewhere. There are some changes in the community. In any event, park the ranger Abu Musana says the people are after more than water. When there is that kind of change in, when it's drought, yes. uh, the when harvest, drought, yes. yeah, drought, the harvest will be impacted. Yes. And the people are coming to invade the habitat, which is for gorillas. So when the people are low on food, mm -hmm. they come into the they park come, looking for the food. Park and, yeah. And the people have been moving further and further uphill toward the supposed gorilla sanctuary. The more people, the more pressure on the animals. <laughs> David Greer, who runs the Great Apes program for the World Wildlife Fund, says people entering the park bring disease with them, along with other dangers. But they have to enter the park to get to access this clean water. And in the meantime, they might want to set a snare for catching an ungulate for food. It's an antelope or something. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. That, that some poor ape steps into. Exactly. And so often they're the kind of the indirect consequence of, of that act. That's what happened to this gorilla, filmed by a 60 Minutes team a few months ago. The snare was removed by one of the vets whose work has actually helped the ape population increase lately. But 880 is still a small number. The mountain gorilla is already listed as critically endangered, and the heat and the people and the dangers they bring are climbing up the mountains after them. Once another large but vulnerable beast, the polar bear was the poster animal for climate change. It's got company. For CBS This Morning, I'm Mark Phillips in Volcanoes National Park, Rwanda. Wow. Glad he's okay. Yeah. yeah. Got very close to the gorillas. <laughs> he did indeed.